what Great Bear says is that in relationship, what we tend to do is to barter goods and services. So I come into the relationship and I bring some goods. And my partner pays a price for those goods. And she brings some goods and I pay a price for those goods. And of course, at first, it's an introductory price. <laughs> Maybe it's free. <laughs> You've been there, right? <laughs> and things go well for a while. Until one day, one of the two people wakes up and goes to themselves, wait a second, I've been giving this thing away almost for free. I'm going to raise the price. <laughs> so things go on for a while and the other person, when they realize this, wait a second, I used to pay a lot less for those goods and the price went up. <laughs> I'm going to raise my price. And the other person raises the price. And then the first person eventually realizes the price increase, and they've raised their price. And this thing goes on for a while until the two parties realize, wait a second, I'm paying way too much for what I'm getting. <laughs> And relationships, if you're familiar with financial terms, tend to go from being a bear market to being a bull market. Yeah. And nobody wants to pay a high price for what they get. But why do we do it? Why do we enter relationships with all hopes of kindness and love, and why do we end up doing relationship as a system of trading goods and services? Why is that? Uh, and that was an actual question. I like interaction from my audience. That's all we know how to do. Because that's all we know how to do, okay? What is expected? What is expected by whom? By both parties. By both parties, okay? It's a dual world. It's a dual world. This thing keeps coming loose, so that's why I keep trying to stick it to my ear. <laughs> Those are all true, but a major reason why we go into relationships and we end up trading goods and services for a price is because we walk into relationships with a huge gaping hole inside of ourselves and we expect the other person to fill it. Right? right? Yeah. Been there? Yeah. Okay. So in, in feeling freedom in relationships, there are many steps that we can take. And the first one of them is to not make somebody else responsible for the fulfillment of our own needs. Any time that we assign somebody else the high duty of making us happy, we are not going to end up being happy. Now, don't get me wrong, to have your needs met in the company of a wonderful other person is awesome. I mean, it's amazing when you can share life with somebody and be co-participants in life. But any time that I walk into a relationship waiting for somebody else to fulfill needs that I could not meet on my own, I'm headed for trouble. And this applies to all kinds of relationships. Romantic relationships, family relationships, business relationships, they're all the same. We all go into them hoping to get out instead of going into relationships with a mindset of collaboration. And speaking of collaboration, 
in counseling people come to me and they say why can't I meet a nice person why do I go from bad relationship to bad relationship to bad relationship not you guys <laughs> Bring them the book and it'll be okay. <laughs> Why do I go from bad relationship to bad relationship to bad relationship? And then I ask them the big question. This is, this is how I pay for the counseling or they pay for the counseling when they get this. I say, in the last five bad relationships that you had, who was the common denominator? <laughs> And there's the deer in the headlights look. <laughs> oh! Because the thing is, we tend to attract into our life the kind of person that we are. <laughs> what? <laughs> I didn't hear that. That's okay, honey. After today, it's going to be good. If you don't like them, they're not. If you don't like them, you're not going to. If you don't like yourself, you're not going to like them. We're getting to that part two. <laughs> part two of the talk. So we tend to attract into our lives the kind of person that we are. And if we want to attract a different kind of person, we need to be a different kind of person. And the corollary, the, the, the side effect of that statement is that for me to have a chance of having happy, fulfilling relationships, I need to work on myself first. Because when I go, I'm repeating myself, but it's part of a talking technique. When we go looking for somebody else to help us when we cannot help ourselves, it ain't gonna work. People say to me, but relationships are so much work. And I say, relationships are not work when we do our own work. When I go into a relationship not having needs that I expect the other person to meet, I stand a less chance of unconsciously entering the bartering market. Because I don't need anything. I like some companionship or some business uh, help or whatever, but I don't need anything. Have you heard of uh, Jesus the Christ? Yeah? Okay, me too. And, and, and Jesus, you know, there's four canonical gospels, the ones that the editorial board of the Bible put in the Bible, and there's like another 20 some other ones, including the Gospel of Thomas and the Magdalene Gospel that I highly recommend you check out. But in the Gospels, there are all the teachings of Jesus, all the things they say people said, uh, all the things people say Jesus said. And there's a teaching in the Gospel according to John, which to me summarizes all other teachings. And they said Jesus said this, and probably he did, but the Gospel according to John was written 40 years after Jesus was crucified. So imagine that I give this talk today and you don't take notes, which you're not taking notes, I can see that. But imagine you don't tell, she is good. You don't take notes and you tell your friends about it and 40 years from now, one of your friends writes a story about what I said today. And I don't mean any disrespect, I just like to put things in perspective. 
However, on the other side of the coin, all of those teachings embody the philosophy of Jesus the Christ. And there's one teaching that shows up in the Gospel according to John in chapter 15, verse 12, that to me is the prime directive. And it says, this is my commandment, that you love each other as I have loved you. And in doing relationships, that is our commandment. To love each other as much as we believe God loves us. To go into relationships wanting to make a difference, wanting to bring something to it, as opposed to having a desperate need to take something out. And be careful. Because when we are desperate, we see love where there is none. Love each other as much as I love you. Now, these are nice teachings, but how can we make them work? How can we put them to work in the context of partnerships? Again, romantic partnerships, business partnerships, family partnerships. How can we put all this stuff to work? Because I'm a practical guy. Don't tell me what to do. Tell me how it's going to make a difference in my life and how to do it. So here's a few things about relationship. The first one is we still need to be responsible in relationships. People confuse unconditional love with doing whatever you want, and it doesn't work that way. We all play roles in relationships. We all have requirements to fulfill in relationships. We all have responsibilities that are ours in a relationship. And part of my job in doing good relationship is that I fulfill my responsibilities. If I have a job, they pay me good money to do good work. It's my responsibility to do good work. If I have a child, I brought a child into the world to bring a kind human being into society. It's my job to forge that child into such a human being. If I'm in a romantic relationship, it is my job to bring comfort and joy and kindness and help to that other person along with taking the trash out. <laughs> I got that one. So in relationships, we need to do our part, and we need to be responsible. And all the talk about unconditional love does not relieve us from those duties. Not only that, we still need to have boundaries. Unconditional love does not mean not having boundaries. What it does mean is asking for what you need in a loving way. Besides uh, doing the uh, church thing, the speaking thing, I also teach a class at an aviation college. And I have students from all over the world with all kinds of personalities. And I tell them right off the bat on day one, I'm not here for you to like me. I'm here to teach you. And the translation of that is I don't take it personally when they like me or not like me. Because I like me. And I like me because before each class, I make sure that I am well prepared to teach that class. And when I'm teaching that class, I make sure that I'm well prepared as being the best teacher that I can be. So although, yes, I want them to be happy, on the other hand, I don't care what they think about me because I'm doing my best job. And the same thing applies to relationships. If you're doing your best job in a relationship, that's what matters. The other person's stuff is the other person's stuff. Are you doing what you can to bring peace, happiness, joy, love, kindness to the relationship? And that brings us full circling to the thing of bondage. In pure love, there is no anxiety. In pure love, there is no fear. 
because I know that I am doing what I can to be a loving being, to be a representation of the Christ presence in this world. And so, I don't look for other people to fulfill my needs. I work on myself. And when I do that, when I'm busy working on myself instead of busy working on them, I let them be who they are. Isn't that beautiful when we let people be who they are? Isn't it beautiful when the people in your life let you be who you are? And when I'm not busy trying to change other people, things work out better. And when I'm not busy trying to keep the peace, things work out better. There's no such thing as keeping the peace. When we try to keep the peace, there is no peace. <laughs> because we carry within us a river of resentment because we are not who we are in that moment. Right? So to love is to be free. And to love, unconditional love, that's a buzz war in unity. We flap it around like popcorn. <laughs> and we don't know what it means. Unconditional love means to be unconditionally concerned with the happiness of the people in my life. I'll say it again, it's so important. Unconditional love is to be unconditionally concerned with the happiness and the well-being of the people in my life. Anything else is icing on the cake. And when I practice that concern for others, and when I take care of myself without making another one responsible for it, a beautiful thing happens. I feel free. So here's a little recipe for, for loving well. And this is where you may want to take some notes in case there's another person in your life, or coming into your life, or about to leave your life, or one of those. In loving well, there's five things I say we need to do. The first one is, work on yourself first. Top of the list, work on yourself first. Second, let other people be who they are. Nobody likes to have somebody else try to change them. Somebody just mutter exactly. <laughs> yes, sir, I, I can identify with that one too. Number three, make requests, not demands. When I make a request, if you say yes, great. If you say no, great. I'll just find another plan. When I make a demand and I don't get my way, I get very angry with you. So make requests, not demands. Number four, don't expect anybody else to meet your needs. You are responsible for meeting your own needs. And number five, be unconditionally concerned with the well-being of the people in your life. And this is so easy. How can I help you? What can I do for you? Try those five steps in your life and see what effect they have in your relationships. So let's wrap this up. Today we talked about the key concept that to love is to be free. And we talked about what that looks like in relationship and we talked about how to apply that in relationships. So here's a little challenge for you, something to try out for this whole, maybe the rest of the month. 
You know, when you are with your loved one and you're all feeling warm and fuzz inside and you feel good and you say, oh honey, I love you. What we're really saying there is, oh honey, nice trading. <laughs> Right? So instead of saying, I love you when you feel good about the person or persons in your life, I encourage you to say, thank you, I feel loved by you. Because that warm fuzzy feeling that you feel is not because you love them. That warm fuzzy feeling that you feel is because you feel the love of the other person. So for the next three weeks or so, get rid of I love you's, and I love you's are very nice. I like to hear them myself. But when you're feeling that fuzzy feeling inside that the other person brought on to your life, let them know, thank you, honey, I can feel your love. Okay? So to love is to be free. And the freedom we experience in love comes from non-attachment and not making others responsible for our own well-being. And the more we take charge of making others feel loved, the more we are concerned with the well-being of others, the bigger our heart grows and the bigger our capacity to love. Love is a strange thing. The more we love, the more love we have. The more we give it away, the more we feel it. Love each other as much as I have loved you, and you will find peace in your life. And so it is.